Hi everybody, this is Alan Fine. I'm here with Fernando Delgado, who is the Vice President of Silver Sea Ecuador. And we're on Silver Origin, and we are in the Galapagos, and we're gonna talk about excursions, sustainability, and education here on Insider Travel Report. Fernando, this is an expedition ship, and so when we named it, we named it in the way of expeditions. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was that was a first for us in in Silver Sea. So being in in Galapagos and considering the fact that the ship is never alongside, and that, that's something very important to mention, we are always operating with Zodiacs. Uh, so it is also very important to mention when doing a booking um, that to the customer because if somebody has let's say somebody who needs a wheelchair then this not is not the product for that uh, and not only not only silver origin but the galapagos in general yeah. because all the yachts and ships are the same you have to be able to negotiate getting in and out of a zodiac so since we are always alongside uh, sorry <laughs> we are never alongside and with uh, we are always using Zodiac. Zodiac become, as you have seen, it's, it's core to the to the to the product. So it's okay. We we are going to do it one uh, naming with um, Zodiacs, so full expedition style, and that's so not we weren't on the ship. Every it was it was an armada of Zodiac. Exactly, it was a, that was the idea to have an armada of Zodiacs with our uh, customers, but Silver Sea style. So each Zodiac had its own uh, wireless speaker. So you could hear what the Bishop of Galapagos was saying, the blessing, what the Captain Chacon was telling yeah, the okay. Godmother Joanna and Joanna's words. And while doing that, we were sipping a glass of, of champagne, of course. The way it has to be done. The way it has to be done. And uh, so that was spectacular, plus the sun was setting, you couldn't pick a better night. Yeah, I mean, that, that day was, was so perfect, everything, everything. The only thing that we were missing was a well jumping on the back, something like that. Would it wouldn't have made, well, it, it would have been great, but <laughs> it was still spectacular and it was a great way to kick off expeditions. So let's talk about those. From a product standpoint, what makes a Silver Sea different? Let's start at the very beginning. When you arrive uh, to the ship and when the butler takes you to your suite, you will see that you have a splash proof um, backpack your water bottle an isolated luxury bo water bottle that you will be refilling in your in your filling station in the in the suite but you will already have your uh, snorkeling gear there a mesh bag with your wetsuit your fins your size because that's information that we get from uh, from the ground operators in quito but you of course if you're going to be snorkeling you need a mask and a, f uh, a snorkel that mask and that snorkel is yours to keep. So we want, uh, we want you to have that as a uh, memory of, of Silver Origin and the Galapagos. Many of our guests is the first time that they're snorkeling or the first time that they are deep water snorkeling. So it creates a connection that we want them to keep. And to keep what, I, what I really like though is the way you built upon the knowledge uh, a, a beginner snorkeler the very first day mm -hmm. would have felt very comfortable and then they got progressively more and more challenging toward the end and uh, at, at, at no time did anyone really feel overwhelmed I don't think exactly we it's more a psychological part as you said because of course when you tell them we are deep water snorkeling everybody thinks that we are in the abyss and with and currents exactly but at the end of the day we are with in sharks. exactly <laughs> and we are with currents and we are with sharks but that's part of the fun of of galapagos i always say you have to disconnect jaws the movie from your from your memory because it gave sharks such a bad name and sharks are just beautiful fantastic creatures and you are still afraid of them remember there's so much food for them in galapagos that the last thing that a shark will try is to have a, a taste of one of these strange creatures that yeah, is yeah, going it doesn't even look good to no, them no, no, no exactly so uh, the idea of the of the snorkeling for beginners is that is to make them feel more um, easy with the with the with the whole thing of the snorkeling we also have even that we are using uh, neoprene 2.5 millimeters shorties that's a question that you may have 
from from your from your clients. Um, we also have um, snorkeling vests. Now that is a bit of overkill if you want because um, uh, uh, very buoyant. Yeah, yeah, because uh, a wetsuit gives you buoyancy. So even if you want, you cannot sink. But just for people to be more, um, if they want extra buoyancy, they, extra they buoyancy, can. They have the the vests, and. Uh, if you remember in that um, snorkeling for beginners, we started in the beach, but out of the blue, you were already 20 feet uh, above the, 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 the bottom. And you were there, you were doing deep water snorkeling. Right, right, right. So that breaks the, the, the fear. And the next day when we go for an actual deep water snorkeling from the Zodiacs, and we go to see turtles in-, in It's a natural in progression. Exactly, and you are there. But the other great thing is because it's a luxury vessel, when you arrive back, and you start taking your wetsuit off, you're handed a bathrobe and a warm drink. And a warm bathrobe, that oh, is. It comes out of a warming closet, yes. Yes, yes it's a warming bathrobe because it's, uh, even if it's uh, uh, maybe a hot day, once as you come back to air conditioning, you feel it's so hot. You get your, wa your bathrobe and then you have either hot chocolate or canelazo. It's a uh, cinnamon and naranjilla. It's a local fruit drink. The and th that hot chocolate, it's 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 like chocolate show in Paris. I haven't had chocolate that good in a long time. Well, we use the very best uh, chocolate that there but is from, uh, from here. Yeah, Pacari. But Pacari is a brand, a local brand that has won several world uh, prizes, and it's it's really a, a, a unique uh, chocolate. And again, going back to that, what I was mentioning in the previous video, we want our guests to have a taste of the country, of the very best that the country has to offer. And that chocolate is chocolate that black chocolate the best chocolate in the world comes from ecuador if, if you go to any of the places in paris and you go to a bonbonier and you see the They're shipping from there it's always arriba cacao so what we are doing is saying okay you can make fantastic bonbons and, and whatnot but also try the 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 the, the, the raw chocolate no and so you have salt here. It's not salt where you have a salt lab and you have a salt bar, but it was, it's, it's, well, this is silver origin. Salt originated here, didn't it? Yes, it, it originated, although not in silver origin, but in silver Galapagos, or previous ship, and in, the previous ship. In, in here in Galapagos, I think that the seminal idea um, came from here, something that was then caught by, by Barbara Muckerman and, or C, CO, and she, to get to the to the to the next level by creating this concept of sea and land taste, the, the salt labs, the salt kitchen, etc. You offer snorkeling, but you also offer ki kayaking. Yeah, we offer kayaking. So let's let's talk about uh, let's say a typical day. Okay. Yeah, um, Wednesday in Florian Island. Okay, so we will start, and that's the only bad news for 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 your guests that we start very early. Well, it's a, it's a let me say it this way: It feels to me like you have three uh, periods during the day, yes. and and that at any point you can wake up and go on something. Yes, that that that, that it is does start early. Let's start. Early. But 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 it's a early start, nevertheless. But even if you don't, if you are not an early um, breakfast, you don't like early breakfast. You can always go, just grab a cookie here in the bar, mm -hmm. a coffee to a go, muffin, yeah. and then you go ahead into the zodiac. And, uh, and, and when on the way back, you can have breakfast. And everything's structured around the heat and midday. Yes. So let's start with the morning. Of course, uh, this time of the year, we are in the hot season. So everything starts one hour earlier than in the cold season. So the hot season goes from December to April. Okay, so in the, this time of the year, we have breakfast between six and seven. And at seven, we are going for the first uh, excursion. So going back to to Floriana as an example. So breakfast, then the Zodiacs will take you to, in this case, to Post Office Bay, to a very nice beach for a walk. And you go to the barrel, the oldest uh, post uh, office maybe in, in the Americas. Um, you have your time there, then you come back to the ship. We go kayaking in Punta Cormorant. Uh, after kayaking, you go back to the ship and we go snorkeling, deep sea snorkeling in Champion Island. Then we come back and uh, in the afternoon, we go for a walk in, in Punta Cormoran as well. So we keep you busy. You have at least, at least you have two activities in the morning and one 
in the afternoon. So never less than three. And we go up to six or seven. And the beauty of, of our products is that you have the chance to choose where and when, not, not when, but w what to do and wh where to join. It always felt like there was something for every level of involvement. So if somebody wanted to uh, maybe forego on something a little more strenuous, which, by the way, you debrief everyone at the, is it easy, is it adventurous, what, what the level of difficulty is, but they could go, th there's lectures all day as well. Yes, there are lectures in the in the afternoon after lunch. You have the in the base camp. You can go and and, and use the the totem and the uh, screen, uh, and the guides are are always here. We at least there are at least two, the expedition leader is always here, the system expedition leader most of the time. So even if you stay in the ship, and you don't want to watch TV, and you don't want to only watch the the landscape outside of your suite, you can. Uh, look for for the expedition leader and say let's talk about Darwin and of course they they will be more than happy to do. So w we talked about snorkeling. Uh, people learned how to snorkel. Mm -hmm. People also learned how to kayak. Yes, yes. We we offer uh, both a kayak briefing and a, and a snorkeling briefing before we do a, a first session where the beginners are taken apart uh, from the more experienced ones and then as you say. As you said before, like with snorkeling, people will get into the same group at the end. How many uh, kayaks do you have? We have eight doubles and we have two singles for the guy. So 16 guests at the time. That's uh, one of the few um, times that you have to actually sign up for something is for kayaking. And there are some activities in which we ask uh, sign up because uh, we have to know how many zodiacs to put in what or not. But re restriction wise, if you want, maybe it's kayak. How many zodiacs? Zodiacs, we have seven Mark Fives and two Mark Six. So we have more Zodiacs than one that we need. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, equipment is needed for snorkeling, equipment is needed for kayaking, but hiking? We can all just go out and hike, and you have hiking for every level. Yeah. The, the only important thing in that sense is uh, to tell our guests to pack uh, uh, water shoes or um, sandals, something for the uh, wet landings because we have two types of landings that you have. Wet landing when we are mm, beaching with the zodiac and so you, you, you actually debark on the, on the water or uh, dry landing when we can get very close to either um, one of the very few jetties that we have here or directly to the rocks. And then you will need um, good snorkeling, ah, sorry, <laughs> good trekking shoes yeah, right. or, or even sneakers. But the important thing is that for them to have a good sole, not slippery, because we're going to be walking on lava and lava can be unforgiven. So there's plenty to do, but what's wonderful about it all, it all uh, supports our understanding of the island and how to sustain it. Let's talk a little bit about sustainability and Silver Sea's part in that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, sustainability in, in the case of the operation of Sea Origin begins with the, with the ship itself. Uh, she is a state of the art uh, in everything that regards sustainability, fuel efficiency, uh, water usage, etc. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, to give you an idea, this ship is um, 100 meters long, 101. Uh, Silver Galapagos was 80, so it's like, let's say that this ship is 20% larger than Silver Galapagos. Even that we have dynamic positioning, which is a system that combines the pots, the propulsion pots and the bow thrusters, so we can avoid dropping an anchor when we are over... So what you're saying is you keep the engine running so as yeah. not to hurt the, the with, a, with an anchor, yeah. even though you keep the engine running compared to Silver Galapagos. Exactly. exactly. So. It you keep still it, uses less. You keep it running 24 hours, and we have a longer, with the Zero Origin, we also launched two um, enhanced itineraries that are longer at the end of the day. And with all this in consideration, we spend 15 to 20% less fuel than Zero Galapagos. That's amazing. Yes. No, no, it's, it's, it's really, it's one of the things that I think it's um, one of the cornerstones of sustainability. The other, the other, fit in this tripod if you want is is um, um, our relation with the community we are not in the business of being like you know the, the benefactors that just drop money here and there no we, we we are in the long term and deep impact so for instance we start working with uh, some of the growers in san cristobal island at the beginning they were producing tree products tomatoes peppers and uh, and um, cucumbers well 
now they are producing more than 17 different uh, fresh products per season um, and uh, they know that our condition is quality. It, it is a process, no? Because of course that is that means also a, a lower yield, but we are paying for the quality. Um, so it's that. It's uh, the, as, as mentioned in the previous video, the, the also products like cheese, like beer, and um, basically the, the idea is that if it's producing Galapagos, we are buying it. So you are helping the local community but you're also educating the local mm -hmm. community because they don't they don't necessarily just because they live here doesn't mean they understand and practice the sustainability that silver sea does so what do you do well actually that's one of the challenges of for galapagos in the in the long term because a population is growing and uh, going to the sites that we go with our crews the sites that our guests see not necessarily are sites that most of the galapagos will be able to to see uh, because of its of the cost that it implies, and uh, but you can only love something that you know. So we've been involved for already five years in different um, education initiatives, and in uh, 2019 we launched the Silver Sea Fund for Galapagos. It's a fund in which we um, we welcome our customers to help us help Galapagos. So for every donation that our guest makes for the Silver Sea Fund that goes to education projects. Uh, and only if they are deep impact. Again, we are not in the business of painting schools. We are here in the business to prepare the six-year-old kids to get into university. That's what we are. That's our business. <laughs> so for every dollar that a guest uh, gives to the fund, CBC matches that with a future cruise credit for the same value, but that doesn't, do without affecting the commissions of uh, the, the travel advisors, yes. And that donation is also tax deductible if it's an American resident or American citizen. So it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win. You, you, you help the Galapagos, you are getting something in exchange from Silver Sea, and it's tax deductible. So it's good to be good. <laughs> but I also found it fascinating that um, we don't think about a, a family on the Galapagos, uh, that, that they live in this one spot and they know this one spot, but they don't necessarily understand the bigger picture. And this it enables you to bring a family, because it's very expensive to travel, yeah. that you can bring them to these areas that we're going to so, th so that they understand and know. Yes, just to give you an idea, uh, going to one of the sites that, that we go, only one, let's say Bartolome, that can cost around to a family of five it can be around 500 to 700 dollars that is a substantial part of the income of that family so of course it's not not wanting it's not being able to so we want to break that and for instance the first project that the silver sea found is, is is supporting which we signed last week with roberto and barbara is uh, aimed at taking the whole population of seven graders of, of uh, galapagos it's a thousand and forty nine students into a program that uh, it will be educational for the for sustainability, and we are taking those girls and those boys to see beyond the towns, to see the national parks. So they understand why this is so special, and they understand also uh, why there are so many limitations in many aspects of their daily life. Limitations that we also see on board the ship. For instance, the orange juice is my classical example. We don't see serve freshly squeezed orange juice in silver origin with the exception of the two months that oranges are in season here because oranges are a potential vector of fruit flies and you don't want to bring fruit flies to Galapagos. So we ask our guests, you're going to stay a week with us, try the blackberry juice from the highlands, mango. Like the mango juice, there are other juices besides orange and if you want orange juice we do have, have orange juice, it's not freshly squeezed, it's super high grade uh, Spanish orange juice but it's important f to understand that there are some things that we cannot offer here in Galapagos uh, because there are rules and those rules have been designed for the sake of the long-term conservation of Galapagos. Well, what happens is we, we come here, we have a lot of fun, we do a lot of things, and all of that subliminally gets in. Yes. And we are now a part of that legacy. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And, and it's, it's, yeah, Galapagos, I believe it, it gets into yeah, your exactly. system. Yeah. And, and um, you will see uh, tomorrow that we go back to the mainland and we go back to civilization. At the beginning, you feel that something is missing. <laughs> 
Galapagos is missing. <laughs> I know that, but I also know it from when we, we, we snorkeled for two hours today, and I got so used to it that when I got up onto the Zodiac, my legs were like, what, I got to do land things now? <laughs> I'm a fish, I'm a fish. No, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I had become the Galapagos. Yes, yes, that, that, is, that, is the, that means that we are doing something right, if you felt that way. <laughs> Thank you again for sharing all this with us. Thank you very much and hope to see you in Galapagos. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.